Hi guys, this video is going to be the best video yet that I've probably put out on the internet in terms of value for high school kids, students, people. Um, and it will also move on towards the adult life uh, once you've finished your adolescence, you've graduated high school and so on. I'm not really going to cover too much ATAR in this one because you're in year 10 still and you're not really doing much ATAR at all. Um, but yeah. Other than that, uh, excuse the heavy breathing you may hear in the background. That's my dog. It's terribly hot outside and he gets to stay in and now uh, he's trying to survive. He'll be fine though. Enjoy the show. So here's the scenario, right? I am in the kitchen. <laughs> Good lighting, nice, nice and warm. Uh, I'm wearing a, a singlet, it's summer, you know, you can kind of see my chest hair, you can see a bit of stubble that I've been a bit lazy to shave, and it hasn't really been much difference, and the students that uh, have seen me um, at school last year, there were, were times where I've been clean shaven, even without a mow in November, um, and then at times it's like this, a little bit dirty. The thing is though, like, and I'm thankful for my, uh, my, my school to not be too strict about, you know, what my fa facial hair is like. Um, I know there's professionalism and all that stuff, but long story short, um, it's good to be part of a school that is open to new ideas. Anyway, so, what are we going to talk about today? Year 10. Now what I've done here is I'm going to set up a two minute timer so I don't start to carry on a little bit too much because I notice that there are um, people out there that talk too much and I feel like I'm one of them sometimes. But anyway, let's begin. So two minutes, first bit. The most common thing I uh, get asked about year 10s is can I drop out in year 10? Is it a good idea to drop out in year 10? And uh, my answer to that is only if you know for sure that what you're doing instead of school is something that you really, really, really want to do right now, long term. And the thing about long term is you never know when you might change your mind. You might start your apprenticeship as a, an electrician and then one year in, you absolutely hate it. Now there are many different variables about hating something or not liking your job, uh, such as the people that you work with or for. Maybe you don't get along with your boss. And uh, funny, funny thing I say about that is your, your teachers, the ones that you don't get along with, they kind of un, un, uh, indirectly help you build resilience to that. So when you do get a job or you do find a, a job that you really, really want to do, but you get unfortunate enough to grab a boss that is not that great, who you don't get along with, who you probably hate even more than one of your teachers, well, that's life. That's it. That's life. You're going to have to get used to that if you really desperately want to have that job. There's obviously other solutions like changing um, to a different apprentice and stuff, but it, it gets so hard to do that. Um, uh, at times. Anyway, so let's say you get a sparky position and you're saying, sweet, I can bounce out of uh, my uh, school. That's it, done. I'm going to leave school and become an electrician. Then uh, go for it if it's something you're absolutely certain about. But be honest with yourself. Is it because you're lazy at school? Is it because you can't be bothered? Because more so than none, you will jump into that apprenticeship and be lazy as well. Here comes the story. Now, over the last three years, I've taught many students, year 11s, year 12s, uh, year 10s, all the way down to even year 1s. I've taught even primary school kids. Now, the one thing that I, um, that I can give to you is one of my favorite all-time stories coming from a year 10. This year 10 um, didn't pay attention uh, in class. They were very disruptive and they just thought that school was a joke. They, 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 they couldn't be bothered. And they kept saying, oh, I'm gonna get an apprenticeship. I'm gonna get an apprenticeship. And they did and they left school. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, school's not for them. They're gonna go chase their passion, dream, whatever. However, during the school time, they were disrespectful. They weren't making any attempt or anything. They were complaining. Um, they were late. Now guess what happened to that student who had all of these traits, who had all of these things um, that, they, that they showed at, at school. These, these not so good you know, uh, traits. They went and did this apprenticeship 
and they lost the apprenticeship, they lost their job, they, they got fired, they got kicked out, they were like, nah, not having you, because they were disrespectful, they weren't putting in any effort, they were complaining, and yeah, they were just being rude. So, have a think, if you're going to leave school from year 10, make sure you're absolutely on point with where you're working and you're absolutely the best person you can be in that job. Because if you aren't, then you don't really want it. You're just lazy and you want to leave school because you're just lazy. Because realistically, you're going to be lazy in that job too. And it happens more times than none. Prove me wrong. Become that statistic. Become that outlier. I look forward to hearing from you. So, the other question I had was, I'm going to start the timer, there we go. The other question I had from um, a lot of year nines going into year 10, and a lot of year 10s during my teachings is, what's owner going to be like and is it important? Now, you know, when you're at school, you're doing things, right? You've got things to do that are that are required of you for, from the um, your teacher, you know, your principal, and the curriculum, the, the department, the education system. And, and and that and that goes along with like the school rules, the school norms, the school guidelines, whatever you want to call them. The thing is, like, but without going into owner deeply, uh, first and foremost, I don't agree with it. Standardized testing is ridiculous, but uh, that's my opinion, and uh, you can roll with it however you want. Please don't start to rebel owner just because I said. I don't agree with owner. Um, there are other people that would probably make a case for it where, where it is necessary. And But for me, think of it like this. Think of it like you've got a task to do, you've been told to do it, and you are going to put in your utmost best effort, even if you're not sure about how you're gonna go. Because nothing in life is certain. Nothing in life except for death and taxes. So your results with, of owner, you can be the brightest student, you can be the smartest student, you can practice, do homework and, and study as hard as you can and you may still fail your owner because you may freeze on the day. Maybe you just, you're just not on, switched on that day. Will that reflect the rest of your life and your personality and, and how smart you are and how, how capable you are of achieving great things? Of course not. One test or a couple of tests to decide your whole future is ridiculous. And we click at different times. I didn't do ATAR. I don't think I really even did well in owner. And look at me now, university degree, full-time school teacher. There's the buzzer. I'm gonna continue on with that because I'm on a roll. Forgive me if I'm rambling. So, the, the long my, from my experience, owner, ATAR, it does not define you as a person. And I'm living proof. There are so many people that are living proof. If you don't go to uni, this does not define you as a person, uh, does, uh, like more of a failure, you know? Like if you don't do well in school, you're not gonna be a failure. It's what you do um, for the rest of your life. If you just sit there and not do anything after school's finished, after you've failed, then you're a failure. It's what you do after you fail that kind of tells the world, yourself, me, the world, who you really are. And that's what matters. Now, if you're stressing about a specific test that you may not even be interested in doing and you give your best efforts and you do fail, you're going to learn from it. Failure is just another word for learning, okay? And you passing a test as well, passing a test, it may not mean that you're going to succeed uh, in the specific field you're um, you're wanting to do and that can cause a bit of stress even me saying this can cause a bit of anxiety for me going up to you and saying hey what you want to do uh, for the rest of your life in the future may not be exactly what you'll be thinking about doing in 10 years time and again I'm living proof of that for the last 10 years of my adult life I'm 29 now so I've been out of school 11 years uh, 12 years quick maths and we finished school when I was 17 and yeah I I've had so many career changes and not because I'm an idiot not because I'm a dumbass it's because I just changed my mind I just went with something else I was a personal trainer I was a lifeguard I liked all of those jobs I liked all of those jobs there were times where I loved them 
and there were times where I didn't like them. And then there were times where I was just like, you know what, I've had enough. And there are variables like bosses, coaches, um, em other employees I had to work with that I didn't get along with, and hey, that's life. That's life. And it's how much of it you're willing to put up with will help you decide with whether or not it's worth doing or not. If you really like to do it, it's not going to affect you. If you really like maths and you have a bad maths teacher, you're going to teach it yourself. There is no better, be bigger flex than you teaching yourself better mathematical skills than your actual maths teacher or any other subject for that matter. Now, forgive me, I've uh, lost my structure of my timer. There goes another two minutes. Here we go. Um, for you year 10s that have started and for you year 10s from last year that have finished and now into year 11, it is so, so important that you are chasing something that you're passionate about. If you want to be an artist, chase your passion to be an artist and don't dwell on someone else's opinion. If a teacher says to you, it's too saturated in the market, then they're just, they're, your best interest is in their, in their hearts. But what, what, what I find most teachers or most parents not realize is that you can chase your dream and that can be your full-time passion, full-time job, full-time everything if you really want it bad enough. And the scary part, and I'm in the middle of a scary part myself, is not knowing if it's actually gonna make you money. But if you're doing something that will um, purely for the money, then it's not your passion. Because really what your passion is, is something that you're willing to do for free. I love my photography. I do it for free. And now I'm doing it as a business. Sometimes I feel like um, it's a chore because I am getting paid and it's now an income. And I'm taking 12 months off this year to not be a teacher, to chase my photography dream. But the thing is, there's so many uncertainties still, and I'm right in the middle of one. And that's where most people are super scared about. And that's because they're not sure that if their passion is actually going to make them an income. Your parents, your teachers aren't sure that whatever your passion is, it may be too saturated, which means there's too many other people doing it, and you may not be successful in it. And they don't want to be blamed for your failure. Yet, if you succeed, They'll be like, oh, I'm so proud of my boy or girl. It was all me. I helped them out. Oh, man, they, I'm so glad I let them chase my passions. I'm going to disregard that timer now because hopefully you're invested in this. I'm so glad that it, they chased their passion, you know. And even if they did tell you not to do it originally, they will eat their words when you become successful at your passion. Because one, if you're successful at your passion, you're already doing it anyway. And you're already doing it out of your own free will. That's success. That's my definition of success. Now, here's the kicker. And here's how I believe right now is how you get there. Whether you're in year 10, year five, year two, uh, or anywhere, you wanna try as many things as you possibly can. Right now you're in year 10 or year 11, you wanna try as many possible things as you can. So, onto that note. Let's go for a walk. Let's walk and talk. Let's go into my office, shall we? So on that note, you are now trying as many different things as you can. Your, you've got your first job as a year 10. You want to work in real estate. You want to work in retail. You want to work in whatever it is you want to do. You may find that um, everything that you learned in Haas, everything you learned in science was not useful to you because your passion is creating t-shirts um, for a, a retail company because they like your designs that you've practiced for the last 10 years or five years or whatever. Um, and put them on social media, right? It can very well happen. And uh, it, it had nothing to do with um, the Pythagoras theorem. It had nothing to do with the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell. It had nothing to do with how good your basketball skills were. The thing is though, you tried all those things at school and now you know you have a better idea of what you don't want to do. So thank you school, I don't want to be a, um, a rocket scientist. Thank you, school. I don't want to be a historian and talk about World War II for the rest of my life. Not that I'm demonizing that. Shout outs to all you amazing historians out there. Todd, love you. Um, school, for me, 
Year 10, consolidation. Consolidating what you know from year seven, eight, nine, and all the previous years you've done in primary school. It's a stepping stone. And then you're like, right, what did I do in those years that I liked? Okay, I really liked maths. Okay, what subjects are there in year 11 and 12 that I can do that I can push my math skills towards? Okay, what careers or what, what jobs can I get out of having good math skills? And then all of a sudden it clicks. You do one unit of statistics and it clicks. You learn about averages and uh, the, uh, the median and the, and the lower quartile and the upper quartile, the box and whisker plots, and you're thinking, what the hell? Wait, I know. I can use statistics to figure out how many shirts I need to make on average to be able to sell. I can research the, um, the people that are interested, that may be interested in these shirts and get a rough estimate of how many shirts I'm gonna make. I can research, research, keyword. Where is research mostly used? Everywhere, every assignment, especially uni. But science, science teaches you research first and foremost because without a, a specific theory, hypothesis or a method that you find on the internet, AKA Google, you can't really do this, uh, the project, can you? And you need evidence, you need evidence. But going back to the research thing, all of a sudden, you know exactly the perfect amount that you can charge to, to sell your shirts at. Not expensive where no one's gonna buy it and not too cheap where you're going to sacrifice the quality of your shirts. And you find that middle range, range, mathematics, all of a sudden, statistics is your best subject ever and you're so interested and you wanna learn more about it and you realize that there's a business class you can take and there's all these in year 11 and 12, business, accounting, all of this stuff. Not because you wanna become an accountant, not because you want to become a, a specific all-round business person, but maybe you do. And that's where year 10 is at. It's like that halfway point. Now, if you feel you're going back to it and you're like, nah, everything um, up, leading up to year 10 was just a complete waste of time, then if you feel that and you're honest with yourself and you ask yourself, did I actually try? Did I actually put my phone down and actually look at what the teacher was saying? Did the teacher actually care? Now, this is different. This is a different story. It, and we're going back to variables now. If the variables weren't aligned in your favor, where you did have teachers to reach out to you to, to really uh, influence you or, or help you instigate the process of finding your true passion, then you gotta do it yourself. That's life. And when you become an adult, there is less people. There are less people helping you. It's all you. And this is why I'm doing these videos. This is, <laughs> this is the main reason I find that there are so many people out there, so many kids that are leaving school and they're like, bruh, what do I do now? And I get messages from old students that I taught two years ago, um, shout outs to you guys by the way, that are messaging me saying, Sev, I finished school, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, have, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, what do I do? It's scary and it needs to change. It needs to be, it needs to be an education system where you do know what to do. And you're not pigeonholed either. So now you find yourselves at these crossroads. You're in year 10 and let's say you are going to continue and finish high school. There are year 11s right now who are getting hit hard and going, holy crap, year 11 is so hard. Year 11 is so overwhelming because they're getting a reality check. Maybe they didn't try hard enough in year 10. Maybe they didn't put in any effort in the previous years and all of a sudden things, reality is about to hit you. Here's how to avoid that first and foremost in year 10. Write down as many things that you enjoy about school, and I'm talking classes, ac academics. Don't say recess, lunch, and your boyfriend and or girlfriend. Write the things that you are interested in. Then try to see what subjects can help you with those interests. What subjects can aid you with those interests. Even if you disagree, have a look, because there are so many, and the teachers have resources to help you out, to provide information. Um, me being a maths teacher last year, we had so many different resources and, and um, maths in uh, after school and, and how to get jobs in, involving maths. And there were so many amazing people that I talked to, uh, shout outs to Raluca, um, that you know were passionate about 
let's say females getting into more jobs that are related to that had a high um, uh, what's the word high concentration of maths involved and and those things are like engineering and um, sci other scientific um, ventures it's it's like there's so many opportunities and just don't disregard yourself so the thing is make sure you find out what you're passionate about and know this that your passion may not last forever Th what you do there is another story for another day because I'm still figuring that out right now and that is my own personal journey but the journey that I've lived through that I've experienced as a year 10 myself and also uh, as a teacher experiencing how other year 10s are thinking years later it's awesome to be able to contextualize it all and share it with you right now, which is what I'm doing. Okay, so in summary, what I would like, um, what, what I would suggest you um, to do, if you're in year 10 right now, ask yourself, have you really given yourself the best chance to succeed yourself? Don't blame anyone else. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your teachers. Don't blame your friends. Blame yourself. Have you and when I mean blame I mean ask ask yourself have you really given enough effort in your seven eight and nine your first three high school years to be able to one have a good chance of succeeding in year 10 and preparing yourself for year 11 and then if you feel like you have tried if you feel like you genuinely given your best shot you know, not being late to class, not procrastinating, not being on your phone, doing Snapchat and Instagram and all that TikTok stuff. Have you given your best chance to succeed? And I'm talking you are preparing yourself. You always had your notebook. You never borrowed a pen from a teacher. You always had your own stuff because you wanted to succeed at school, which is your first kind of mission coming into the real world. Because going back to the whole succeeding at school, it's it's your first success. The reason why the military makes you uh, gets people to make their beds at the start of the day, it's your first success of the day, and then it flows through. If you manage to succeed in um, passing school and graduating, not ATAR or whatever, just graduate high school. There's your first major success in your life. And at the end of the day, if school still isn't for you and this is going back to you year 10s if you find that you you still you still feel like it's a waste of time even though you've given your best shot as a year 10 then you've learnt that the education system isn't for you and it isn't for everybody you want to be a hands-on person there are so many kids that I've learnt that I've learnt that I've taught that and that I've learnt from that um, the education system is not made for them and that's not that's not a bad thing and I feel and a lot of other people feel that the education system do does need to change and it is changing slowly to cater for more people such as the ones who don't really like school and even though they try to put in their best effort it's not for them they're more hands-on they just want to go out there and work and that's fine that's life that's you know, we're not all the same. We're, everybody is uniquely different. It's just how you look back at yourself, how you reflect, and how, you, how you're how honest with yourself and what you want to do. My final thoughts about all this um, as a year 10 going into year 11, and and this will lead into my next couple of videos as, uh, as you senior um, kids, year 11 and 12. Make sure that you don't waste year 10 um, as a middle point because yeah I believe it's a middle point halfway between middle school and actual senior school but it's your best year to try as many things as you can to really knuckle down so when it's time to, to choose your subjects for year 11 and 12 know that it's not the be all end all you choosing the hardcore subjects for year 11 and 12 doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be doing them subjects full on it doesn't mean you're going to succeed with them it doesn't mean you're going to fail in them either but it doesn't mean you're going to be using them from years to come in, in years to come so try as many things as you can in year 10 accept the failures accept that some things might not be for you don't get sucked into having an ego 
and changing your mind and, and worrying about someone else calling you out and saying, oh, I thought you were into that. Why are you changing? That's the best thing ever. You knowing, you becoming uh, self-aware and knowing that, man, this hardcore mass isn't for me. And you changing earlier will give you a, a better head start in life in, in for the rest of your life. And I've been doing it for out of school for 10 years. I've been changing and, and moving and, and experimenting and trying as many different things. And I'll continue doing that for the rest of my life. But it's, it's what I do next, the next day. It's what you do now, actually, right now, after you watch this video, it's what matters the most. It's what matters the most. And then reflect back, learn from your mistakes, and eventually you'll find something that you just love and you're gonna succeed in. I believe in you, I do. Hopefully this video um, has met your expectations, um, being the probably the best video that I've put out. There will be better videos in the future um, and I look forward to creating those. But this is me unscripted. Um, I tried to do a timer thing, but I was like, you know what, I just need to ex explode my thoughts out to you guys and share my experiences and hopefully you got some value out of it. Let me know what you think. The comments are the fire to all of these videos. I get about three to five messages a day from people that have watched these videos via Instagram, Snapchat, um, the comments on the YouTube. It helps, it helps fuel the fire and helps the videos um, get out to more people that, that need to, to hear what I'm talking about and if you don't just if you don't agree as well please make a comment um, there are people that are disliking the video and that's okay um, everybody's entitled to their opinion even if it's out of hate but hey I really appreciate all the feedback and I learn from it too so looking forward to the next one let me know how you go good luck and as always good thanks mm -hmm.